tour by day. Oh, give me a sway. No, I go jury. I'm one of the hunter. Hunter Biden, I'm listening. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. Come on, Mr. Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. Do solemnly swear. I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. Do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. Office of President of the United States. And will, to the best of my ability, will, to the best Mas of my ability, preserve, yeah. protect, and defend, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. President. <laughs> Mandaya Trump is silly officiellement. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Biden. Nine minutes. Nine and a half minutes at noon. As he's giving the address. So, Dr. Joe Biden, overcome with emotion in that moment, who wouldn't be? Gave him here the quest of a lifetime for Joe Biden. George, this was the ultimate long game. He was elected the seventh of 29, the youngest, will now be sworn in as the oldest president. He has waited. The most young senator in America. He is the most young president in the United States. He told me the words of the president matter. Yeah, I am so proud of him. The transition of Biden. Joe Biden sworn in as 46th President of the United States of States of America. First Lady of the United States. Officialement, officialement. Officiellement, Biden a commis président des États-Unis d'Amérique. Pour apaiser mon Congo, on a su qu'il y a PMB, on a vice-président à Trump. What's happening? Heated. 
We've learned again that democracy is precious. Democracy is fragile. And at this hour, my friends, democracy has prevailed. So now, on this hallowed ground where just a few days ago, violence sought to shake the capital's very foundation, we come together as one nation, under God, indivisible, to carry out the peaceful transfer of power as we have for more than two centuries. As we look ahead in our uniquely American way, restless, bold, optimistic, and set our sights on a nation we know we can be and we must be. I thank my predecessors of both parties for their presence here today. I thank them from the bottom of my heart. And I know Our ex-president, our governor, George Bush Jr., Obama, Bill Clinton, President Carter, the money is the new salute for his life. I've just taken a sacred oath. Each of those patriots have taken the oath first sworn by George Washington. But the American story depends not on any one of us, not on some of us, but on all of us, on we the people mm -hmm. okay. who seek a more perfect union. This is a great nation. We have great people. And over the centuries, through storm and strife, in peace and in war, we've come so far. But we still have far to go. We'll press forward with speed and urgency, for we have much to do in this winter of peril and significant possibilities. Much to repair, much to restore, much to heal, much to build, yeah. and much to gain. Few people in our nation's history have been more challenged or found the time more challenging or difficult in the time we're in now. Once in a century virus has silently stalked the country. It's taken as many lives in one year as America lost in all of the world. Millions of jobs have been lost. COVID. Hundreds of thousands of jobs. A cry for racial justice, some 400 years in the making, moves us. The dream of justice for all will be deferred no longer. We'll be first. A cry for survival comes from the planet itself. A cry that can't be any more desperate or any more clear. And now, the rise of political extremism, white supremacy, domestic terrorism. Well, white supremacy will not be defeated. We will defeat. Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. When he put pen to paper, the president said, and I quote, if my name ever 